Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews here, Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive. And guess what? Today is my birthday and I'm recording an audio and a video at the same time. We're gonna see how that works because I'm recording on two different platforms. Anyway, I wanted to pop in here today because I was thinking about like, what should I record for my birthday episode? And I'm hitting a deadline because I'm heading out of town to go speak at an event. I'm actually going to be in LA on my birthday, seeing some friends and speaking on Kathy Heller's stage with her, your turn to podcast. I'm super excited. And one of the reasons why I originally wrote this book, The Desire Brand Effect, and created this business is all because I was going through a transition. I had to reinvent myself and I was overcoming this phase in my life and period of burnout where I had to reinvent myself. And one of the things that I realized through that process of building a business for the first time and the second time and now a third time was that as creative business owners and people who have a skill set or a talent, sometimes we aren't necessarily trained to be professional marketers and we're oftentimes not trained to be to run a business right and so the running of the business can sometimes create a lot of stress and anxiety and also we end up operating in a way that's not really supportive of our goals and so the one of the reasons why i wrote the desire brand effect was to share not only a little bit more about my journey but how i kind of overcame this obstacle of building a business through trial and error instead stepped into the role of becoming a chief visionary officer. So I love this book so much. So many people have said that this book is kind of like the jewelry business owner's Bible. And so today for my birthday, I am going to read, do a dramatic reading of the first chapter for you. <laughs> it's part of our audible book, but I'm gonna do a dramatic reading of the first chapter of the desire brand effect for your listening pleasure. Now, before I dive in to the dramatic reading of the book and sharing a little bit more about my journey, I wanted to share something special for my birthday. We're giving away a couple of special things, including a free resource called 35 Ways to Repurpose One Piece of Content so that you can post it everywhere. And I love this resource because it's an amazing visual representation of how you can create content that can be repurposed in multiple places. And I share with you and break down the system that I've used in multiple businesses. Now, my second gift is I'm going to invite you to apply for a free Instagram bio audit. We've been getting a bunch of people reaching out to us in the DMs because because we just hosted a content workshop and I'm going to have links to all these things in our show notes for the podcast. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll have links in the show notes there. If you're watching it on another platform like Apple podcast or Spotify, we'll have it in the show notes there, but you can literally apply to get your Instagram bio audited by us to, and we're going to tell you if you are attracting or detracting dream clients to your bio, we're going to give you some suggestions and send you on your way. So if this is something that you're interested in, check out the link in the show notes, or you can head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash Instagram audit and apply to get your Instagram bio audited for free by us, by someone on my team. So those are my free birthday gifts. I just wanted to mention that to you. So check out the links in the captions. And I wanna dive right into my dramatic reading of chapter one of The Desire Brand Effect. Chapter one becoming the chief visionary officer of your business. In order to create a truly successful business, you got to work on it, not just in it. Michael Gerber. As the artist that you are, you did not decide to run a business to be overworked and trapped in the day to day. You started a jewelry business because you had a dream, a passion for design and a willingness to go out on your own to make a living doing what you love no matter the risks. You turned your talent into your vocation because you wanted to share that passion with the world and spend your time being creative. When you started, you were likely overflowing with inspiration and excitement about making beautiful products, but perhaps you didn't give much thought to the business side, or more precisely, what it would really mean to make your way in this industry with a jewelry brand. This was certainly true for me. When I opened the doors to my first business as a jewelry designer over 25 years ago, I started Tracy Matthews Designs, Inc. to share my talent and make a living from my creativity. It was only later that problems began to show, 
and I experienced my business as disjointed and draining. Six months in, my now ex told me, if you don't start making sales soon, you're going to have to go back to your retail job. No way was I going back to retail. These words lit a fire under me to succeed. I worked harder and spent many years growing a business through trial and error, struggling to figure it all out on my own. Eventually, I gained some traction and started getting recognized. As my business grew, I realized I hadn't been thinking about how all of the independent parts of the business were connected to each other. So I kept driving forward with sales without creating systems in my business that would allow me to work less and get more out of the time that I was putting in. The result? I became stuck in a pattern of feast or famine with a poorly run operation. I spun my wheels doing repeatable work, which was frustrating and uninspiring. I spent my time focusing on my weaknesses in business instead of my strengths. I saw my sales increasing, but this was overwhelming without the support systems to back them up, especially when all my efforts didn't amount to the kind of financial results I wanted. At a certain point, I had barely any time to do anything I liked or spend my weekends with my family and friends, the reason I had started a business in the first place. I was exhausted from working well into the evenings, sometimes seven days a week, and I had basically created a job for myself. This was not what I expected the life of an entrepreneur to be like. My creativity was tapped. My vision was short-sighted. I was so busy being reactive in my business that I didn't have the time to focus on the aspects that I loved. Not having a clear vision, plan, or systems became a challenge down the road when I wanted to hire employees. I hadn't been thinking strategically about how to keep it all running without me and documenting the way I did everything. I'm naturally inclined to be a quick starter who doesn't need a lot of information to get things going. And maybe you're the same. But when your objective is to grow a business, something has to change. I'd been in business for several years and had made multiple six figures when someone suggested I read Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. I remember sitting in my new office in New York City, a small 10 by 10 space with peeling paint on the walls and no windows that I shared with three team members after relocating from San Francisco. Going through the numbers with my new accountant, he said, Tracy, have you heard of the E-Myth? Given the title, I was insulted at the first suggestion that I needed to read it. However, when I opened the book, I was blown away. It was what my business had been missing the whole time. In the e-myth, the author describes how most businesses fail to achieve their potential because most business owners are not entrepreneurs. They are technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. This book made me realize how I'd been acting like a technician and that my business was more of an expensive hobby than an enterprise that offered me freedom and financial security. Technicians live in the present and focus on making, selling, and delivering their products or services, as opposed to achieving results through people and systems and strategizing for the future. While technicians exist in every type of business, in the jewelry industry, this idea of doing all the work of making your products by yourself is what I call having a maker mindset. Reading that book is the moment I woke up to my own maker mindset and started acting like the leader of my business. I reframed my thinking around business visioning being boring and set about creating a new role for myself, the position of Chief Visionary Officer or CVO. Everything opened up in a short space of time and I was quickly able to play in my sweet spot, finding new prospects, working on design with clients, and coming up with the big picture vision. Very soon, I learned the reality that being the CVO of my company was in fact the most creative role that I could take on in my business, and the success I was looking for followed. The difference between maker and chief visionary officer. When they start out, most designers don't think of themselves as the head of a company, and yet it's a crucial mindset to adopt if you want to grow your business beyond being a side hustle. Before I go on, I want to stress that there's nothing wrong with making your art as a side business or designing jewelry as a hobbyist while holding down a full-time job or running another business. These are completely valid paths for some people, and I'm not disparaging them as options. However, if you're here, it's likely that you've made the decision to create, grow, and sustain a jewelry brand. And to do that, you'll have to make another decision. 
one where you decide to step out of the role of maker and into the shoes of chief visionary officer. Now, here's how we define a role that you might be playing in your business as it stands. Maker, someone who has a skill and uses it to make some sort of product or service. In this case, it would be designing or making your art. Manager, someone who oversees and controls the flow of other people doing their job. They are responsible for manifesting the company vision and business plan. CVO, the visionary of a creative product company whose responsibilities include creative direction, designing, business planning, final decision making, and overseeing all aspects of the business. If you're wondering why you bought this book, when I'm only going to tell you to stop making your art, let me reassure you that I will be showing you the path to a profitable jewelry business that makes you more money and gives you back more of your energy and time. In order to achieve this, you have to start thinking like a visionary leader. But believe me when I say that this allows you to be even more creative than the roles you are stuck in now. For example, the kinds of tasks and activities you might find yourself juggling as a maker in your business include responding to inquiries and questions from prospective customers and retailers, taking and fulfilling orders, including making the products and shipping them, negotiating with suppliers and overseeing orders of supplies, managing inventory, being present on all your marketing channels, creating and posting content, dealing with returns or complaints. Compare these with the main responsibilities of a chief visionary officer of any creative product brand. Creative direction, designing collections, brand vision, overall creative integrity of the company, business planning, the entire package of your combined plans, including projected growth, setting goals, financials, operations, HR, sales, and marketing, final decision-making, company vision, driving the brand, leading the marketing and sales efforts. You may identify a number of day-to-day -day tasks in the maker list that are familiar to you and wonder what a lot of those in the CVO list even are. In order to start seeing yourself as the leader of a business, here are some scenarios that compare the behaviors of a business owner who is acting as a maker side by side with the way a CVO might tackle a situation. Please note, the extremes are for effect. I'm gonna go through them now. Creativity, maker mindset, reactive, piecemeal, unplanned, designs influenced by own taste, Expenditure is random and also according to likes and dislikes. Visionary leadership, strategic, branded, cohesive, designs influenced by sales potential and past results. Supplies are well considered and under control. Decisions, emotional decision making without regard for what is best for business. Visionary leadership, responsible, objective, rational decision making. Finances, maker mindset, unaware, avoidant, deluded, afraid to look at the numbers in case it's as bad as feared. Finances, visionary leadership, sharp, savvy, monitoring consistently, addressing problems head on, looking to the long term, open to making adjustments. Operations, maker mindset, disorganized, unprepared, undocumented not anticipating problems or articulating what help is needed, not hiring based on needs. Operations, visionary leadership, organized, grounded, well-documented, supported. Repeatable tasks are easily picked up by new support team members. Hiring for skill and experience. Strategy, maker mindset, vague, oblivious, non-committal, Hopeful. Strategy. Visionary leadership. Specific. Aware of growth potential. Future focused. Taking action on longer term dreams. Product. Maker mindset. Retains control. Does everything. Fails to see the possibilities of outsourcing. Product. Visionary leadership. Outsources productions. Values time. Creativity. In the maker mindset, a designer is a creative reactionary who narrowly focuses on design, lacks future vision, does not have a plan, and creates with blinders on. 
The maker has no strategy for growth or design, but rolls with the punches. They spend most of the cash coming in the door without tracking numbers or looking ahead at potential expenses. They prefer to wing it and are buoyed when they see some success, but worried when there is a sales lull. On the other hand, a designer in the CBO role acts like a creative visionary. This means they design collections, create branded visions, track financials, and are innovative with design and inspiration. The visionary likely has a one- and three-year plan for growth and design development and a five-year vision they're shooting for. They keep a solid business plan, not the 50-page kind, track the progress of the company against that plan, and make adjustments so that they're able to hit their sales projections and profit numbers. As a designer in the maker mindset, our business owner is a design amateur. The maker designs because they like something without considering all the other factors that maximize their profits on any given design. They design whatever they like because it's pretty, but end up with either low margins or pieces that aren't priced to sell. This can result in extra inventory or low sales. They keep their favorite designs in their collection because they're attracted to them, regardless of how well they're doing or whether they're good strategic design choices. As a CBO, the business owner becomes a design maestro who designs with the end in mind. They consider how the design will affect production, costing, sales, and overall expenditure to the company. During the design phase of each new collection, they are strategic about costing, quality, and margins. They cut any designs that don't have enough profit margin based on perceived value or ease of manufacturing. When it comes to inventory, it's no surprise that the maker is also an inventory amateur, buying what they love with little regard to how it fits into a collection because they haven't created that vision yet. As a result, they end up with boxes of random supplies stashed in overflowing cupboards for years with no clue what to do with them. They're seduced by bright, shiny objects and max out their credit cards to purchase them. When they get their supplies back to their making space, they realize that they bought too much useless stuff. Instead of returning duplicates and supplies bought in error or finding another way to reduce inventory, they throw the extra materials into a box to deal with later. A visionary leader takes charge of their supplies, like an inventory master. They keep a close eye on inventory and its direct correlation to profitability. They save any scrap to reuse or return. In the case that they end up with extra inventory, they strategize ways to sell it off and get rid of it quickly. Decisions. When making decisions, the maker avoids looking at the cause and effect of their action and is an emotional decision maker. They base decisions on emotions without looking at how it will play out financially. This often looks like labor fees getting out of hand and continually shrinking margins. They know they have to cut overhead, but do not like the idea of letting go of a team member who isn't performing because they've become a friend. Instead, they can't stay objective with their staff, which results in reducing profits or a decision to cut the more efficient team members who aren't as fun or cool to be around. In a CBO mindset, the business owner is an objective decision maker who considers the big picture and bases decisions on what is best for the company, even if that means making tough choices. Their point of view is objective, even if the decision is counter to their feelings. If labor fees get out of hand or margins shrink, the visionary leader takes steps to evaluate and keep the most efficient team members for growth. Finances. In the maker mindset, the designer is financially frightened, afraid to look at the numbers and benchmark goals because they have a feeling that they're not making enough money, and they're correct. The maker's attitude is, I'm an artist, not a numbers person, and they do not consider it their job to look at financials. They might use credit to finance the business, just like they did when it was still a hobby, or they hope for a magical business partner who's going to invest in their fledgling company and run the day-to-day. -day. If they're even paying attention to expenses and notice them rising, they're unable to figure out why. Instead of troubleshooting at this point, the financially frightened designer ignores all the warning signs and continues their spending behavior. Our CVO designer is financially savvy. They look at financials of the business consistently so they know if the business is where it should be. If sales numbers are low, they strategize to find ways to hit their goals. If sales have exceeded expectations, they revise their goal to allow for more income. They focus on profitability so they can pay themselves and their team. 
They use cash flow to finance their business for the long term. If margins decrease when developing a new collection, the financially savvy CVO does the work to figure out why. They immediately identify problems and adjust accordingly. Operations. In a maker mindset, our designer is operationally destructive, meaning they get frazzled every time something goes unplanned, and it happens a lot. They are completely disorganized, but they can't understand why they spend more of their day answering questions than working on or in their business. They have no solid systems, so when they hire a new intern, contractor, or employee, they are immediately frustrated when that person can't figure out how to do the job without any training. They end up letting them go because it's easier to do everything themselves. They are clueless about how to lead a team and have a laissez-faire attitude to management. They expect people to find or figure out their own way of doing everything. They hire people they could be friends with as opposed to hiring based on skill set and experience. Contrast this with a CVO who is operationally optimal. A leader understands that a smooth operation with solid systems is the only way to run an efficient, profitable business. They are calm and collected when they interact with their support team, either contractors or employees, because they have documented operations and created step-by-step -step instructions for how to do just about anything in the business. When the CVO hires a new team member, it's a breeze to train them because everything is written down and tasks are templated. They understand the importance of being objective when managing a team. They're in charge of hiring and make decisions based on ability, skill, and experience. Strategy. The maker is a business butterfly who flutters from one thing to the next without direction. They ask, strategy? What strategy? They set loose quarterly and yearly sales, marketing and business plans, oftentimes keeping them all in their head rather than committing to a spreadsheet or accounting software system. They are inconsistent when tracking sales as they come in. They think they're hitting their numbers until their bookkeeper tells them the actual sales figures are way below what they thought. Instead of taking action, the maker is paralyzed by feelings of failure. A maker may also prefer to only look at what is in front of them. They make all of the pieces themselves but have no real vision of where the company can or will go. They see themselves as artists, not business people or entrepreneurs, as they aren't into strategy. As such, they are noncommittal about the future and don't have a plan to grow. Only a dream that their art will be discovered someday without proactively going after their dreams. By comparison, having a CBO mindset means that the owner is a successful business strategizer. This person makes solid yearly and quarterly sales, marketing, and business plans. They are revenue-focused and goal-oriented. In fact, exceeding their goals is one of the most exciting parts of being in business. The chief visionary officer of a jewelry brand does not leave anything to chance. When it comes to future success, they focus most of their time on the business vision, the bigger picture, future goals and dreams, and strategic planning. This type of designer is strategic about goals and wants to have a multi-channel brand with retail accounts, an e-commerce branded website, and wholesale accounts. They leave nothing to chance and take concrete steps towards their dreams. The goal itself does not matter. But the act of turning vision into reality is a trait that the CVO practices again and again. Product. As a production maker, the person who has a maker mindset cannot wrap their head around stepping away from doing everything themselves. They don't see the value in outsourcing the making of pieces because that's why they started a business in the first place. This is a result of not seeing the value in freeing up their time to focus on more highly leveraged activities. On the top of this, hiring someone to make their products is an expense that they don't think they can afford. By not removing themselves from this process, the production maker actually makes far less. It's what might be termed creating a job for yourself, instead of focusing on activities that generate revenue and grow a business. This maker will continue to make everything, overworking and staying up late to get everything done, despite their hourly rate being minimal when they work out how much time they put in. In fact, they often think of themselves as hourly wage earners instead of the principal of their company who earns a salary. The relationship between a visionary leader and their product creation is about being a production ace, as they understand the importance of taking themselves out of the production equation. They know their time is more valuable than what they can pay another production worker, manufacturer, or jeweler. 
someone who is not a business owner and does not want to be an entrepreneur to do. The overarching theme here is that the production ace removes themselves from being the technician. Instead, they eventually hire people who can move much more quickly with no loss of quality, increasing productivity, and profit margins. The production ace realizes that their time is better spent focused on growing the business, and they consider themselves the leader of the company with a salary. Steering my business as a visionary leader. You might be wondering how I went from being in that maker mindset to standing in the role of chief visionary officer when I started my jewelry business all the way back in the 90s. The answer is so much mindset work. This is why mindset is the central part of laying the foundation and momentum, our two core programs at Flourish and Thrive Academy. I'll give you some mindset tools in a later chapter of this book, but for now, let me paint the picture of what flipping the script allowed me to do when I was a jewelry designer starting out. I had a passion for designing jewelry, and I wanted to make a living doing what I love. In college and beyond, I often worked evening and almost every weekend, but I didn't want that for myself anymore. I wanted time for my friends and family, to see my nieces and nephews growing up, to be part of their lives. And I knew deeply that a business can offer the financial security and lifestyle freedom that would allow me to do this. I wanted my business to be financially abundant and to grow easily with intention and direction. I wanted to have a flexible schedule and a team that was on board with my vision to grow my brand. I wanted to be able to retire early and enjoy my life. I wanted to be happy. Happy because I was the one running the show, a big shot entrepreneur. I wanted to have a business that paid me abundantly. Honestly, I had a huge dream and I thought I was set for life by now. However, things didn't go according to plan because even though I had a vision, I wasn't acting like a visionary. I started my business and experienced some growth. I took on staff and other expenses. I thought everyone would figure out how to do what I needed and my business would just keep growing. However, I hadn't set up the infrastructure or shared my vision with my team. Winging it had worked for a while when I was running the business alone, but now that I had others working for me, my business dysfunction had a trickle-down effect. I was being reactionary and not learning from my mistakes, so my business started backsliding and we started losing money. I was bombarded with questions, constantly telling my team what to do, putting out fires, and not getting why this was happening. There was a time when I didn't have any money left over after we shipped a $100,000 order, and I couldn't understand why. It was frustrating to be working so hard with nothing to show for it, at least not the financial abundance I was trying to create. On top of this, my team was struggling, but I was too overwhelmed and burnt out to untangle all the issues we were having. I felt like a failure and was stretched to my limit. Why, when the business seemed to be taking off, was it also caving in? The answer is, I wasn't stepping into the role of chief visionary officer. I was stuck in the role of manager and maker combined, and I truly believe this experience is universal for designers setting out to grow a business. After my accountant recommended Michael Gerber's book, everything about my approach changed. I hired consultants who taught me to think and act like a visionary. Over the years, and as a result of that mindset switch, I grew a pretty awesome following. My jewelry line was sold in over 350 retail outlets across the globe. My media coverage was abundant, and celebrities from Halle Berry and Charlize Theron loved my work. Not only did I grow an epic brand, but my business was providing me with the freedom, lifestyle, and money I deserved. Shifting my mindset from the first step to changing how I looked at my jewelry business. Your mindset is one of the key factors responsible for everything in your life. Your happiness, your ability to attract success, your business outlook, and just about anything else. In order for your business to grow at the pace you want, you need to be driving the business engine forward by moving towards your goals and visions with thoughtfulness, intention, and solid planning. As a creative being, your circumstances might be different to the exact path I followed, but chances are your feelings, intensity, and struggle are the same. At any stage of business, whether you're a solo maker or have a team already, you'll run into the same roadblocks unless you set your business up the right way. From working effectively to encouraging growth, every business needs a plan. If you spend most of your time working in your business instead of on your business, you'll continue to face the same issues over and over again. 
Shifting your mindset. When you shift your mindset from being a maker to being a visionary leader, your business will blossom and it will set you free. Being the CVO of your business is freeing because you have space to focus on the creative aspects of it instead of being stuck in the day-to-day. Awareness comes first, so it's important to start by taking stock of where you are, what roles you currently do, what aspects you love, and where your best talents can be utilized in your business. Where are you spending your efforts right now? Are you a technician who's afraid to let go of the idea that you must make every single piece yourself? Are you a manager implementing strategy and answering questions all day, constantly putting out fires and addressing short-term issues with no spare energy for anything else? Are you an entrepreneur working on creative direction, business planning, and company vision? There are no judgments here. Only by being completely honest with yourself can you start to step into visionary leadership. Once you understand how you're acting out the maker mindset, you have a decision to make. Will you make this mindset switch and step into the role of chief visionary officer for your business? Even if you're a solo entrepreneur or a one-woman show, it's important for all businesses to have someone who acts and thinks like a chief visionary officer because you must know where you're going now and in the future. As your business grows, you'll have to let go of the number of roles and activities that you've been overseeing and start delegating to managers and technicians because what got you here won't get you to the next stage of your business. You will need to maximize your efficiencies and improve your systems and business path so you don't plateau or even regress. Shifting your mindset won't be an overnight process. You will have to work in your business still as you work more on your business. The key is that you're aware of how you're behaving now and begin to take baby steps or giant leaps to change. Though it is key to make this mindset switch if you want to run a profitable jewelry company, it is beyond the scope of this book to share the tools of mindset work, although this is a central part of programs I run at Flourish and Thrive Academy. Instead, what I'm going to share for the remainder of the book is the model that a visionary leader of any creative product brand at any stage can follow to create business success for themselves. A visionary leader sees their business as a brand, separate from and led by them, sought after and sustainable, strategic and stylish, customer focused and creative. A successful and profitable jewelry brand means replacing trial and error tactics with a tried and true model that gets results. If you're willing to embrace this model in your business, so much will open up, including a bigger paycheck and more freedom for you. It's time to introduce you to that methodology, the desired brand effect. Thank you so much for listening to the episode today. And I would love to know what you think. So if you purchase the desired brand effect as a birthday gift to me, I would love for you to post your book and just tag me in stories at Tracy Matthews NY or at flourish underscore thrive, uh, knowing kind of what your response or what you're getting from this book really means the world to me. We've sold thousands and thousands of copies. If you haven't picked up the book yet and you've been listening to this podcast for a while, well, make sure that you pick it up. It's called The Desire Brand Effect. Stand out in a saturated market with a timeless jewelry brand. I don't know why, but Amazon has it on sale right now, so you're gonna save five bucks on the the paperback version. And you can also grab this on Audible if you're an audiophile and you like to listen to books. I've had several people tell me that they've grabbed both. So once again, Grab my free birthday gifts. There are the links in the show notes. And if you want to get that Instagram audit, make sure that you check that out as well. All right. I hope you're having a great day. Ciao for now. It's Tracy signing off.